Hello, hello, I'm Cads, and welcome to today's video. So once again, the portal is a light with the lovely yellow hue or golden hue, however we want to describe it, which means it is once again time to pull some shards. But in this case, they kind of pulled a switcheroo on us. It is 2x sacreds. However, it's overlapping with a summon rush instead of a champion chase. I would have expected and I predicted that it, this was going to be a standard rotation of, of shard pull events, meaning it would have been a progression chance event, but they switched it around and it's actually 2x sacred, so a little bit earlier than we'd expect, and it's coinciding with the summon rush for the fusion fragments for Eostrid Dream Song. As always, if you do want to skip ahead to the shard pull portion of the video, it will be in the description box down below. There will be timestamps or just in the chapters on the video along the bottom, so you can skip ahead if you don't want to hear me ramble. So as usual, we are are not pulling without a purpose there is a summon rush going on as i mentioned earlier containing the fragments for Aerosted dream song and bonus points for you guys who are sticking around through the pre preamble here appreciate you guys very very much in this case the first milestone for fragments is 2250s for five fragments and then the higher milestone of 3150 for 10 fragments so a grand total of 15 as we knew from the calendar but the specific values were a little bit less honestly than i predicted i was expecting something around 4100 which would have been down here um, 4100, so it would have been around eight sacreds equivalent, but it's down at 3150 for the higher milestone, so it is six sacreds and then four sacreds for the smallest value. And of course, you can do the remainder 250 here, 150 here with mystery shards, and you can see here that we've already pre pulled 300 predominantly because there was a champion training event going on, so I made sure to do um, or to use mystery shards to generate food for that purpose, and that that got me to around you know 300 ish. But the main thing I want to highlight that's different between a summon rush and a champion chase is that the location and amount of points required or amount of shards required to get the legendary tome is substantially different so in your standard champ chase not you know ones were featuring bonus things or bonus rewards bonus champions whatever just a standard run run of the mill champion chase you're going to see one legendary tome at 3,000 points and the second one at 5,500 points and on average assuming good decent luck average luck it would take around eight to ten sacreds give or take to get one legendary tome now in this case for the summon rush eight sacreds would be four thousand points which wouldn't get you anything specific obviously you'd get all of these rewards but you would have to go all the way out to 5400 so essentially 11 sacreds just to get one legendary tome now that being said the you know, sunk cost of this is that you'll be a lot closer, one sacred away, one sacred away from getting three or to get, get, being able to get yourself three legendary tomes. So that is a leg up uh, relative to a champion chase. But of course, you'd have to invest all the way out to 11 just to start. And then you'd be able to get three just for going a little bit further. By comparison, a champion chase, you can pull around eight or so, like I mentioned, to get one legendary tome, which is just a lot cheaper than 11 for one, even though you could pull 13 and get three in this particular instance and a champion chase tops out at two max. Maximum. and 5500 in terms of sacreds could be a lot depending on your rng whether or not you're getting legendaries but of course the important caveat there is that champion chase tournaments have the possibility of you using previous uh, fragment summon champions current or permanent fusion champions rosin scarhide lady mikage all that stuff in order to get yourself some points for the champion chase that helps you save the equivalent amount of points in shards and so you get a little bit more flexibility with, with what you can do in a champ chase compared to a summon rush so even then it might be eight sacreds if you get really bad luck but you might be able to compensate for the bad luck of, of uh, instead of having to pull 10 sacreds you summon one previous champion from a previous uh, fragment summon event like Aostra dream songs for example and then you'd be able to get 500 points in the champ chase and offset the amount of bad rng you happen to get from just pulling your sacreds during 2x sacreds so all of that to say that in my instance in my personal plan i had only planned on getting the five fragments from this that's all i needed i plan to skip 10 from the fusion 10 fragments from the fusion and those 10 would be the summon rush now objectively speaking there is a good amount of value from relatively speaking from four sacreds to six sacreds you get a lot more bang for your buck and then you can skip artifact enhancement dungeon divers or whatever or could have skipped depending on your plan and so objectively speaking it would be advantageous to just go out there because it's only two more sacreds but at the same time if you're trying to truly min max and you don't need to spend those two sacreds well you save two sacreds here two sacreds there two sacreds there and all of a sudden now you have 10 extra sacreds over the course of five savings or whatever and so when you start to extrapolate that over a long period of time months potentially years depending on how long you plan on playing the game that's how you build up shards and that is how in my case i've built up shards 
So the other thing to consider here is that, of course, 2x sacreds is not new. It's not going anywhere. There's always going to be another one. So me, in this case, we're just going to be pulling four sacreds because I only need to pull four. I could pull six, but I've already invested in the artifact enhancement and I already plan to finish the dungeon divers. And as painful as those can be, I know that I can always easily generate silver by running dungeons, running spider more and more specifically. I can always get silver back. I can always complete a dungeon divers by throwing more gems at it. And which is essentially energy in that regard but having not having enough shards is kind of hard to fix as a free-to-play player because you don't have access to buying um, more shards. So the main takeaway here is that for myself, in this case, I'm only going to be pulling four sacreds, even though it could be more optimal, generally speaking, to pull six. In this case, you get more bang for your buck. But since I don't need the extra bang, we're just going to save the bucks and then go for the four sacred milestone. And with that, let's pop over to the portal and take a look at the overall shard count currently on the account 660 on the ancients 166 on the voids three on the primals and a whopping 60 on the sacreds which of course we're going to be pulling four for the day when it comes to mercy we're kind of in a weird spot focusing on this row six sacreds deep meaning that we're six away from entering mercy so this is that weird zone where if you get a legendary you're reset and you're kind of screwed or not screwed but you're less likely to get lucky during a pogo event for example or you could get unlucky and get a lot closer to mercy which is better for a pogo but then of course you don't get a legendary and you might be sad especially if it's 2x on sacreds but like i said another 2x sacred will be in the future so it's not really that bad if we happen to not get a legendary this go round. so honestly i'm not opposed to not getting a legendary because that would put us a lot closer to mercy making a pogo for sacreds a lot more enticing however the same rules apply to pogo events there's always going to be one in the future it might not be in the exact near term but even if it's longer or further away that just gives you more time to make decisions like this one in order to build up shards so that you can participate more in a pogo event or a guaranteed event or anything of that sort so the best case here is that we walk away with a brand new legendary and the worst case is we're closer to mercy which is more optimal for a pogo event in the future where we have the opportunity to get two legendaries for the price of one and if we were to get a legendary my top three are valkyrie poison exploder and molly tankard and of course for the epics we are still in the market for a handful about half of the fusion epics for lady mikage and so any of those that i do not have let me be specific here with my desires any of those that i do not have would be optimal as far as the epics are concerned all right, so let's get to the pulls. We've got the space, we've got barely enough cash, and hopefully we get some pretty decent luck. I think it's been long enough since our crazy primal session, so some good RNG happening is not the end of the world. Urtakata, one of the cool cha coolest champions in my opinion who can uh, be a poisoner without having poison in her kit, because as long as she places a hex and people on your team crit, they have a chance to place a poison on the target. So it can be pretty cool I think for like Demon Lord Clan Boss or any single target encounter, but unfortunately I don't think she sees that much play over all. Sacred number two, Zargala, one of the premier debuffers for Faction Wars, probably really good in the Cursed City nowadays. Um, she's a little, little bit power crept because this is a four turn cooldown, but it is a triple hitter AoE, which is very, very rare, but only the first hit um, can place the AoE decrease defense and it is not 100% chance to land. So it is a little bit of a bummer, but it is nice when it does land. And again, it can be good for Faction Wars if that's all you need. Her A2 hits pretty hard as well and can also activate the A3, which can come in clutch if she has enough damage to do so. Adriel, I don't think she's that great. I think she has AoE decrease attack and a little bit of a heal with reflect damage. Not much to say about her. And sacred number four. Very, very quick session today and nothing happened. Allure, that's cool. Uh, I do have her, but uh, the best, I think she's still the best. A single target turn meter control champion in the entire game even on negative affinity because with all three hits if they crit it's a 75 percent uh, turn meter reduction which is massive obviously that is halved on certain boss encounters specifically dungeons uh, stage 21 plus including hard modes so keep that in mind but nonetheless she's still very very powerful i still use her for like dark fey stuff like that so yeah there you go that is to be expected we got just four epics which means the worst 
case air quotes took place in this case so we're closer to mercy which is better slightly more optimal for a future pogo event which i am not opposed to I guess it's also worth mentioning that um, I did purposefully wait until Sunday to do this because I know there was a 10x on the uh, faction unity champion for the Sacred Order, but um, it's just, I don't know, those faction unity champions just aren't really appealing to me because they're kind of exclusive to a degree. They're not in the general summon pool of champions, and so they're going to be harder to get, and they're harder to synergize because you have to have a team around them that's all the same faction, which is just really hard to do unless you have a very, very stacked and or developed roster. So I don't put a lot of stock in them. Obviously, I do happen to have one, Fina, Blade of Arabia, so I did get lucky during her summon pool, but I don't go out of my way, and I like to maximize the chance that I get champions that I actually want from my personal wish list. And with that, that is going to do it for today's video. We are are going to keep this one short and sweet and hopefully you guys did enjoy that little deep dive into a little bit of how i strategize around my shark pulls even when circumstances or especially when circumstances change from the expected let me know in the comment section down below if you were going for the first or the second milestone four or six sacreds and let me know what you pulled from said shards if you got something amazing as always if you did find this video helpful then be sure to hit that like button down below it really does help out the channel and if you enjoyed the video then be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content just like this one in the future Thanks for watching and have a good one.